In this video, we will talk about the nervous system of cockroaches. The nervous system is mainly made up of ganglion. Ganglion are collection of neurons. And when we classify this nervous system, we say that cockroaches have central nervous system as well as peripheral nervous system. Now central nervous system in our case has brain and spinal cord. Whereas in case of cockroaches, there are two major ganglion which make up the central nervous system and that is supraesophageal ganglion and the second one is subesophageal ganglion so this becomes like the brain part so supraesophageal is comparable to brain. It is not exactly brain. It is not having any kind of analytical pro property. It is just a structure, a slightly bigger structure, which is formed by collection of the neurons. And as the name tells us, supraesophageal means it is located above the esophagus and subesophageal is below the esophagus. So this is comparable to the brain part. Now the spinal cord of our, ours, to compare with that, they have in the central nervous system, cockroaches have a ventral double nerve cord. So there is a structure which can be compared with brain, though it is nowhere closer to brain, and a ventral nerve cord. Now PNS, that means peripheral nervous system, it includes the nerves. The nerves that arise from supraesophageal, subesophageal and all the ganglion which are there in this nerve cord. Cockroaches have nine ganglion and these nine ganglion, they are actually paired but they are fused. So if we draw one ganglion like this, the other would be here. So they are fused structures. So there are actually nine and they are located in three thoracic segments. That means prothorax, mesothorax, metathorax and six in the abdominal region. Six abdominal. But the six abdominal are present in first to fifth. That means first, second, third, fourth and fifth. And the sixth ganglion, sixth ganglion is in the seventh abdominal segment. This would be clear when we draw it. So let us now draw the structure. So here is this large supraesophageal ganglion. And as we said, it is the largest one formed by the fusion of many neurons and we need to assume that if this is the esophagus above the esophagus is present supraesophageal and below the esophagus is present the subesophageal that means there is a space between the upper and the lower one so i'm going to draw this one this is smaller and this is the subesophageal now Supra and subesophageal ganglia, they are connected by, again, the nerve fibers. This is known as circumesophageal commissure. Again, on top is the supraesophageal, below is subesophageal and connecting them, there are those strands. So let us label this. This one is supraesophageal ganglion which is comparable to brain. This one is subesophageal ganglion and this connection which we have drawn here is known as the circumesophageal commissure. 
So it is just a connection between the supra and the subesophageal. Now let us come to the segments. So this is the prothoracic ganglion, then mesothoracic ganglion, metathoracic ganglion. So we'll label them. This is prothoracic ganglion. Then this one is mesothoracic ganglion. And this is the metathoracic ganglion. Now coming to the segments of the abdominal region. This is the first abdominal. Then the second third, fourth, and fifth. Now this is the place where the sixth should have been present. But instead of here, the sixth is present in the seventh segment. So this one is first abdominal, second abdominal, third abdominal, fourth, fifth, and sixth. But it is present in the first abdominal segment, this one in second, this one in third, this one in fourth, this in fifth, and this one is present in the seventh abdominal segment. And all these ganglion are connected by a double nerve cord, which is going to run on the ventral side. If you remember, we made those sinuses and the lowermost sinus was called perineural sinus because it is a ventral double nerve cord. So this is how the central nervous system is there. That means there is a supraesophageal ganglion, there is a subesophageal ganglion and there is a ventral double nerve cord. Now coming to the nerves, from the supraesophageal ganglion arise four pair. That means one, two, three, four are going to be here. One, two, three and four. These nerves and their names are given on the basis of the structure they supply to. So this one is antennary. That means it is going to supply to antenna. The next one is optic. This goes to the eye. Then this one is going to the upper lip. That is, it is called labral because it is going to labra. And the fourth one goes to the neck region. So it is known as cervical. So these are four important nerves that arise from the supraesophageal. One going to antenna, second going to the eye. So it is called optic. Third going to the upper lip that is the labrum but and the name given to the nerve is labral and one going to the neck region. From the subesophageal arise three pair important nerves and they supply two. This one goes to the lower lip that is labium. It is known as labial. One goes to maxilla. So it is known as maxillary. And one goes to mandible, so it is known as mandibular. And from each segmental ganglia arise many nerves which supply to all the body parts. So from all these ganglia there would be nerves arising. From here also the nerves would be supplied to all the body parts. So when we say nerves, there are important nerves which are arising from supraesophageal. There are nerves from subesophageal and from all the segmental ganglia. So from prothoracic to the last one, these are all segmental. Three in the thoracic region, promiso and meta, and there are six in the abdominal region, but they are not found in all six segments. First to fifth ganglion are present, sixth segment there are no ganglia and seventh segment again has ganglia. So there are total nine ganglia which are there, three in the thoracic region and six in the abdominal region and supra and subesophageal ganglia which make the CNS mainly. So this is how the nervous system of cockroaches 
works. Now, after this, we have to talk about the reproductive system, which we'll take up in the next part.